Praise God. Sister Joy, are you there? Yes, John. I'm ready to go. All right, praise God. Let me see if I can find Zen. Let's see if this is Zen. All right, hold on a second. Zen, are you there? Okay, this might not be Zen. Let me put this one back on hold. I got to look for him because he calls him with Skype, and uh, I'm not, not always sure. Let me see if this is him. Zen, are you there? It is. I am here, Yay! brother. <laughs> how you doing, man? Hi, Zen. How you guys doing? Hey, Dr. Joy, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm good. Um, glad to be here with you guys, and uh, always a pleasure, and looking forward to our monthly discussion. Yeah, praise yeah. God. Go ahead and take it away. I'll I'll just uh, you know, kick back and drink myself one of these here bubblies. <laughs> I love these things. <laughs> anyway, I do. I, I'm kind of like you know addicted to this sparkling water with like a hint of whatever. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. Uh, take it away. Praise Jesus. Yeah, sure. Well, um, Doctor Joy, would you care to open with any kind of current events or anything that you're examining with regard to your research or anything that you're looking into a new well i think uh some of the things that john just brought up uh, before we came on is quite interesting especially with end times uh i guess fulfillment of prophecy and that's the fact that president trump has recognized israel's control over the golan heights and the fact that um you know all this stuff has to be in place uh and and of course with as we know uh biblical scripture has specifically told us that the end of days is directly related to that area over in uh, in Israel and Jerusalem uh, in regard to the temple and the temple mount and uh, it's uh, amazing that we're living in a time that the prophets actually told us about 2,000 years ago that they could have everything so spot on and I think that the uh, you know just listening to this last hour that he has been talking about, John's been talking about all these things. I mean, when I first started doing this research, it was just maybe here and there you might be able to find things. But like he was mentioning a while ago, that there is so much happening every day that uh, it's like a woman in travail where every uh, event is is adding itself up to a closer and closer event of, you know, the the birth pangs delivering the baby uh, like a woman in travail. And and we're seeing that. I mean, we're seeing it around – around the world, I think one of the biggest things that I've noticed a lot more of is the number of earthquakes that are happening within a 24-hour period. And I've been watching earthquakes for a long, long time but as they were mapped. And now, I mean, you know, you, you can't turn off Google Earth without seeing all the red circles everywhere and how many there are in like a 24-hour period. It's just absolutely mind-boggling. And the fact that we are now pushing to go to the moon and uh, rockets are going up, and uh, Star Wars defense systems against supposedly what else but something coming at us. I mean, everything is pointing to the end of day. So there's a lot of things in the news right now. And, of course, you know, my work specializes right now on research into the pineal gland and mind control because I feel like that's really Satan's final frontier. So uh, it, it, it looks like that might be a, a great possibility, especially since, I think I mentioned on the last show that the scientists at MIT were using those laser beams to transmit direct audio message into a person's brain. So, I mean, it's already out in the mainstream media that that's a possibility. And when you go back and look at the research that I started doing, you know, years ago, kind of sounding the the trumpet on the wall, like, wake up, (laughs) they're going to control our brains because that's the universal collective consciousness that um, they had at the Tower of Babel. And so they're after it again, and unfortunately our generation, it looks like when it said that all these signs are going to come to pass, especially the, you know, the uh, uh, reorganization of Israel and, and, and the way that it is right now, that the generation that would see that come to pass would be the generation that would not pass. In other words, as a terminal generation, we are the final, we are the final game. And uh, it's like Hugh and I have been trying to tell everybody, Zen, this is a serious situation, and you need to be paying close attention every day to your choices and the people that God is placing in your life because we are, I'm afraid, the final. And uh, then a, when that all happens, it says in the days of Noah, like, everyone's partying and drinking and carrying on and not paying attention to anybody. 
And um, mm-hmm. we're kind of seeing that right now across the world. And then people like uh, us who are trying to sound the trumpet, I think God is placing people near us and around us that we need to be paying special attention to because it seems that there are a lot of people that have gotten away from God that may have chosen to, um, you know, as a young person to have been involved with Christianity and they've gotten away from it. And I think that uh, the research we're doing is hopefully showing them that they need to come back. They need to come back into the fold, much like uh, the parable of the prodigal son. And I think that this is a final call for people because I think they're, gonna, you know, God's getting ready to put us not on an ark this time, but and then catching away. And uh, once that door closes, and you're left here to fight an antichrist and a, and a, and a battle of Armageddon and that kind of thing, uh, it's not going to be a fancy little way to fight the system because, um, like what my research is now showing, you can't fight it. They're going to have the technology to be able to control your mind. And essentially, you're seared. So you don't want to miss the boat, and the boat is the one that's going to be taking us out of here instead of the boat that was floating on you know, the, the worldwide flood back in Noah's day. Right. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Dr. Joy, and then we'll, um, I think we should go into some of the AI and the singularity and mark of the beast and all that. But, um, you know, whenever somebody asks me about where I think we are with regard to, to the timeline and being in the end of days, I always mention the parable of the fig tree and how um, Yeshua, when the apostles asked him, you know, what would be the signs of your return and of the end of the age? And he specified in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, you know, that there would be aware that no man deceive you and that there would be, um, uh, you know, wars and rumors of wars, earthquake in diverse places, all of these things. But then he specified, know ye the parable of the fig tree. And so I wanted to ask your take on that um, because, you know, I believe that it was absolutely um, the fulfillment of prophecy that the nation state of Israel was regathered in 1948, which was something oh, that yeah. has, you know, never happened in the history of humanity, a, a country coming together again and then having the same capital and same land. Um, can you can you talk about your take on the blooming of the fig tree? Well, I think that I have to totally agree with you about that because Israel was reborn. And, um, you know, that's the thing that that was its chosen people. That That is the promised land. I mean, that if you go back and read through biblical scripture, everything about uh, that coming to pass again and becoming a great nation again. And, and, and even we have to look at um, when Christ comes back. It's going to be in New Jerusalem. It's going to be in that same place. I mean, this is an area of the world that is is very sacred uh, in God's eyes. So um, everything that happened, you know, to uh, just think about the Six Day War in 1967 when uh, Jerusalem had been governed by Gentile nations, and then it was not governed by that anymore. And then the fact that, uh, uh, you know, Britain kind of owned all that area, and they kind of really set back in motion uh, the state of Israel being able to uh, – you know, come back and kind of into power. And then, of course, we know that throughout the um, years that we've had presidents and whatever, I mean, as, as far as our um, political people in the Senate and Congress, they had always kind of voted for to recognize Israel, but we just never had a, a president that was willing to stand up and say, hey, I'm going to move that embassy and I'm going to put it there. And now he has come forward and said he's going to uh, recognize that Israel has control of the Golan Heights. But at the same time, he has a peace plan that's out there, and he has a peace plan that uh, Kushner had been carrying around to nine different countries and trying to get that established. And, you know, I'm sure not just knowing Trump's mind, he's a businessman. And if you really look at that area, the chances of development into that area for economic gain for everybody concerned would be a, a great thing because without a fighting and a war and that kind of thing going on, there will be a lot, of, a lot more travel, a lot more uh, economic um, boost in, 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 in kind of, I guess, maybe a, a big area to travel and see and, and invest in. So um, it's just unfortunate that we know that what the end game is going to be, that that area is going to be completely just kind of annihilated. 
at the end of days. And it's always been my concern that, you know, it, it tells the people there to flee, not to go, not to go there because it's going to, it's going to be a, a major plague at the end of days. And of course the, the Valley of Medigedo, where we know that the Battle of Armageddon is going to be set. I mean, you know, it's amazing to me, Zen, that this earth was created a long, long time ago, and that perfect battlefield has been sitting over there. I mean, it's a perfect battlefield. It's a natural battlefield that even, you know, General MacArthur and those people that uh, were great, uh, um, you know, military minds can look at that area and say it's a perfect place for a great battle to be fought, just to know that it was created. I mean, that, if anything, tells us that when God says he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, he knows the first and the last. I mean, he, he tr- truly has had all of this planned out, and I guess that's what's most important that people understand, that we are not just some piece of grain of sand floating around in this, in this universe, that we are all here for a reason, and everything that's happened has been under a magnificent mind. And you can't get order like we see order uh, out of a chaotic situation like a Big Bang where things are thrown together and they can end up wherever. Everything in our world has order. It has a rhyme. It has a reason. And the more that I have studied how, you know, we are, our bodies have this humming noise, our DNA is singing, everything has its own tune. I mean, you just, you begin to see from a scientific standpoint that really the Bible, as it told us in very simple terms, that science, like I've mentioned before in the shows we've done, science has literally proven that the Bible is correct and everything in it is 100%. So it's, um, it's interesting to me that, um, you know, we know that, that Israel is going to play a big uh, part in the end of days because the Antichrist will absolutely be there. There will be a peace treaty. There will be all these things that really do occur in that particular area. And it's being set up right before our eyes. Never in our history has it moved so fast. And so uh, looking at that along with uh, all these other signs in the heavens and the, in the uh, sun, moon, and stars, and then the plagues, and uh, like John was mentioning, things like Ebola and things like that, they're, just, they're only going to get worse. Uh, you can look at our country right now with the flooding that's happening, you know, in the Mississippi, Missouri, all in that area. We know that the, the fallout of it is going to be higher prices, loss of you know grain, loss of money. And, and another thing is that our insurance companies are having to dish out all this money with all these hurricanes and tornadoes and um, and floods and whatever. There just comes a time when there's just not you can't you can't garner enough money from everybody to pay everything off. So we're going to get to a point right. where very much what the Bible says at the end of days it's going to be. Uh, a very serious, scary thing. And if you don't have the mark of the beast to be able to buy, sell, or trade, I'm afraid that's going to be a very, 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 very bad time. And and, uh, I don't think it's too far away. I think you and I both know that just because of the signs. And and like you said, we don't know the day nor the hour, but we were told about that, you know, when the fig tree and and the blooming and the parables of the uh, wheat and tares like you and I have discussed, uh, the catching away, the thief in the night. I mean, there's just all these kinds of things that are adding up that we're living in the end of days because it's no different than it was in the days of Noah, like I mentioned before. And, and it says when you see these things happen and look up because redemption draws nigh, and that means he's coming back, especially for the catching away and then to the marriage supper of the Lamb and then, and then finally the, the great return of the second coming of Christ when every knee will bow and acknowledge him when he comes to the skies at the battle of Armageddon. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I want to share um, with the listeners because there's a a book called The Apocalypse of Peter that is not you know not included in the canon, but it answers this question of what the fig tree is specifically, and so it's um, one that people can look to for confirmation as to the things that we are talking about here, and it says in this particular text. And ye, take ye the likeness thereof, learn a parable from the fig tree. So soon as the shoot thereof is come forth, and the twigs grown, the end of the world shall come. So in this text, it also equates it with the end of the world. And I, Peter, answered and said unto him, Interpret unto me concerning the fig tree, whereby we shall perceive it. 
for throughout all its days does the fig tree send forth shoots, and every year it bringeth forth its fruit for its master. What then meaneth thou the parable of the fig tree? We know it not. And so here Peter asked him directly, you know, what are you talking about with the blooming of the fig tree and the end of the world? Can you explain it? And then Christ says, And the master Lord answered and said unto me, Understandest thou not that the fig tree is the house of Israel? Even as a man that planted a fig tree in his garden, and it brought forth no fruit, and he sought the fruit thereof many years, and when he found it not, he said to the keeper of his garden, Root, that it make not our ground to be unfruitful. And the gardener said unto God, Suffer us to rid it of weeds and dig the ground round about um, it and water it. it. Then if it bear not fruit, we will straightway remove its roots out of the garden and plant another in place of it. Hast thou not understood that the fig tree is the house of Israel? Verily I say unto thee, when the twigs thereof have sprouted forth in the last days, then shall fain Christ come and awake expectation, saying, I am the Christ that am now come into the world. And so here again, Christ associates it also the end of days with the coming of the Antichrist. And we see that, you know, according to the vision of Daniel and the prophecy of the, you know, the, the statue and the last kingdoms and the iron mixed with miry clay, all of that is a setup for the beast system. And the beast system is handed over to this, what I think will, you know, will be this alien god, this antichrist, Apollyon Abaddon. And that it also has to do with, as we were talking about with the AI and that kind of technology, the singularity that is being spoken about in so many different places. And also with the, you know, the whole premise that the ancient aliens are our creators. Dr. Joy? <laughs> you know, I, I, I just get really tickled the fact that they, they want to use these ancient aliens as our creators. And, and mm-hmm. I just get blown away when I see that on TV, <laughs> TV because it's quite evident that if you go back and you look at what these beings supposedly look like, I mean, we go back and we think um, – Let's just take a look at what was drawn there architecturally uh, in Babylon. And you can see the architecture shows that there was this, these beings that supposedly brought intelligence to them uh, in the Mesopotamian area. Uh, actually had wings and they had lower half serpents. You can see, see the scales and you can also see half yeah. of it is a human being. But I find it most interesting is that they were not really helping mankind. And, and even um, if you go back in the text, you know, when the, uh, you look at things like when the sons of, uh, of light fought against the sons of darkness and, you know, the Anaki is supposedly uh, those that came to earth. You know, even in their text, they were using humans uh, to do their dirty work, to mine for gold, to do all these kind of things. But I think the thing that is most interesting to me, and again, it just goes back to the connection of the pineal gland to all this. In those um, architectural, you know, uh, reliefs where it's been carved out, those things carry a little thing that's like a little metal pocketbook in their hands. Mm -hmm. And then the other hand, they have like a pine cone. And if you study that Eastern religion about the pine cone, you know that the pine cone is a symbol of the pineal gland that's in your head, that it looks like a little, it looks like a little pine cone. But that little metal box, I think, has some kind of control like Tesla technology where there's earth energy that was being controlled. And I'm not so sure that, you know, the megalithic buildings that I discussed in my my book Eden uh, that were built all over this planet, including things like, uh, you know, Stonehenge, the pyramids, really all the pyramids, and um, any of the Gothic cathedrals that the the Knights Templar are built, uh, were all located on these ley lines. And these ley lines go around the earth, and they garner telluric energy, and that energy can be pulled up through it. And all your beliefs that are in uh, Egypt and really all over the world, just like the big one we have, Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., they all have quartz located in them in some way, as if they're pulling on something uh, from the earth. And I, having researched so much on Tesla, know that he had you know the copper coils and things like that. He could use a coil and be able to... to 
extend that energy wherever. And, of course, we know that if we had been allowed to develop that in our country, then we would have never had to pay for gas or electricity, which I mean, can you imagine right. not having to pay for those kinds of things. I mean, that, the money could be used for other things, but they drove it underground so that they could turn around and charge the common man like you and I all this huge money and make us have to go to work every day. I mean, just, just all this kind of stuff. But going back and looking at this and this little box that was these particular beings were carrying around with them, I think that they were connecting to the pineal glands of people, and that was part of what happened at the Tower of Babel. And they were working humans in such a way that they were locking on to them. And they became of one mind, one accord, and that kind of thing because um, it's kind of like a queen bee or an ant. If you study a lot about uh, secret societies, the Egyptians and things like that, they were definitely of the serpent lineage. You find that they all highly, highly uh, vindicated and venerated uh, the bee and, of course, the queen bee. And that was because, you know, the queen is, is what stabilizes the community. She's at the top, and we know right. all the things like pyramids always have the all-seeing eye at the top, and even on the dollar bill it has an all-seeing eye that was very serpentine. But, you know, if you think about it, if you are manipulating that gland and you can lock on to that gland again, then you can again force everybody into a universal consciousness of a connection. Uh, in which something is able to control our bodies without us being able to fight against it. And so I think we're going back to the Tower of Babel. I know that uh, a couple of years ago when the Olympics were held over in London, one of the things that they showed, um, and, you know, they're opening and closing the ceremonies, which is always so esoterically uh, designed uh, with information and symbols right up in our noses about what they're planning on doing. But, you know, they, they brought back Nimrod and they – literally used the Tower of Babel and, and the Tree of Life and that kind of stuff involved in those ceremonies like that. So the intent is to carry us back to that, to be able to, you know, to control us where we don't have the mindset we'll be used like little robots. And um, and I, I think that's the thing that worries me the most. Up until this, Up until these days that we are now living, we had the mind to make decisions and choices about what it is we choose to do, but then when you find out somebody's subliminally giving you messages and you don't even realize it or you're participating and playing games like video games or you're listening to music, there's all these symbols and things that can be incorporated into beats and rhythms that you don't even think about. A song can literally uh, send you into a hypnotic state. And um, and it concerns me greatly. I mean, you can put somebody in a room and take a drum and beat it at 72 beats, and you literally drive them crazy to the point that they, their body can't take it. It'll kill you. Uh, so when you see these things and you see the connection to the game, the end game plan, um, I've always kind of wondered how, how it could be that we couldn't fight against an enemy. But now that, you know, if you know you can control somebody like the queen bee controls the worker bees, it's pretty, it's pretty simple and it's pretty easy. Yeah, the hive mind technology, and they certainly have been working on things like that for a very long time. And uh, I do believe that in the antediluvian and the um, the prior times that they had very high technology and high capacity. And you know why anybody would trust. Um, the Sumerian and the, these fallen angels to come and save us or to be, you know, benefactors and to redeem us from ourselves when they're clearly stating, even in the ancient texts themselves, that they were trying to create a slave race of humanity exactly. even back then. You know, so what makes people think that they're going to come and be um, beneficial to us in any way? when they were doing all these genetic experimentations and who knows what kind of mind control, but certainly they were trying to engineer in a slave race of humanity because they were trying to create this servant class, which we see that as part of even of the directives on the Georgia Guidestone. Oh, yes. And, you know, that's something that you and I have been fortunate by living in Georgia. A lot of people – Right. Don't get the opportunity to go to see those particular stones, but just knowing that they're very close up there to you and having gone to see them myself, 
and, and have read, you know, what is on there, there's no doubt in my mind what the, uh, the global consciousness of the uh, Illuminati or, let's say, uh, elite that rule the world. And people can say, oh, that's just consider- conspiracy. But, you know, in, in doing the research and knowing that the serpent lineage came out of, of, of the Garden of Eden through Cain's lineage and then got across the flood through Canaan's lineage, and then, you know, reconstituted itself and redeveloped itself and became thoroughbreds that now rule the world, um, y- you understand that it's, it's, a, uh, it's a game against the common man. It's a game against humanity, and it's a game to literally destroy our souls if we choose to participate in all the things that they set up to try to bring us down. And, um, you know, the fact that these, so-called aliens <laughs> that are supposed to be here helping us out, you know, you and I both know that the fallen angels have been with us from, from the get-go. I mean, you go back to the right. uh, part in Genesis, you know, 6-4, when they came, you know, upon the daughters of man and they produced these giants. I mean, they were taking women. They weren't marrying them. They were literally right. taking them. And, and and God's angels, the good angels, would not have been doing that because they knew they were not created for such a, a, a purpose. And the only way that they, these fallen angels, knew to do that was because they were following Satan. That was their, you know, that was their their hero. That's who they looked up to. I mean, they looked up to him enough that they got cast out of heaven with him. And the fact that they were thrown to this earth and they've been here and you know, some of them are in chains and, and by the earth and that kind of thing. I mean, um if people want to believe that they're here to help us, like you mm-hmm. say, and like I mentioned, go back and read the Sumerian text, and they'll tell you they were using us. They were using common man um, back in those days as slaves. You know, right. I mean, how many people could literally be mass mass produce something like the Tower of Babel that we've heard about? You know, that was up into the trying to go up into the heavens. You've got to have people that you're controlling, 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 where they don't want to do anything else but work to have made that happen. Because, you know, there was not hundreds of billions of people like there are today. So they were using they were using mankind some way. And, and the fact that those cats were carrying those little boxes and that little cone that looked like a pineal gland tells me that they were locking in to human pineal glands and using them as, as robots. And that's where we're headed back. I mean, they're head, we, we see now that there's no separation really between the governments and and uh, we can talk to anybody. I mean, whether somebody talks Chinese and we talk English, you know, we have an ability on a computer for it to translate in, it, in real time. I mean, we don't even have to have a human translator anymore. It can be done all through technology. So literally, we are back to the days of the Tower of Babel. Now the only thing is to do a new world order and establish it where everybody's got to you know, go along with the same thing, a new world religion, a new economy, uh, world economy, well, we're at that. I mean, already we're, you know, international trade, international exchange of money, all these kinds of things have been put in place, and most of the, the countries that have had any kind of war or problems in the past couple of years, you know, they made it look like it was the, uh, you know, the president or the ruler of the country that needed to be gotten rid of, but then like in my books, I try to show that the whole intent to get in there was to change their country's banking systems so that their banking systems locked into an international banking system that went goes all the way back and connects itself up to the Rothschilds <laughs> you know, and the Rockefellers and, and people who, who you know, well, the, for example, the Rothschilds who actually set the standard for gold and all that. I mean, it, it's mind-boggling when they use – and it, it's a Hegelian way of doing things. They make you see this, and then they give you another option, but they're trying to get you back to this point. It's kind of like a Hegelian principle. And at the same time, it's doublespeak. They, they're saying one thing, but yet they're meaning something else. And, um, and so they, they play this really um, like a game of maybe uh, shadows where you're led to believe this is for a good purpose, but yet we know it's for an evil purpose. And and that's what what bothers me is that they do it right in your face now. It's not like it's not hidden from view. When when I was first doing this research, you had to get into secret society books and start 
looking at the symbols and how they were using them out in the regular world. Now it's just it's like right in your face, literally. They're not hiding it like they once were. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is also one of the indicators for where we are uh, with regard to the end of days. And, um, you know, some of the things that we've been speaking about for a very long time of uh, how these elites have practiced these blood rituals and how that is one of the ways they give themselves over to these particular beings to be possessed by them. And it, even the Emerald Tablets tell us from very long time ago that yes, right. you know, crept they into the councils, taking forms that were like unto men slaying by their arts the chiefs of the kingdoms, and taking their form, they rule over man, sought they from the kingdoms of shadows to destroy man and to rule in his place. And that's exactly what has happened. And, you know, these, of, of course, we have um, have shown how these are the children of Cain, and that being of their father the devil, they take blood oaths, they take allegiance uh they utilize all these secret societies and these um these brotherhoods and these secret covenants and connections to perform and to act out and orchestrate the agenda for the devil and he is the eye at the top of the illuminati pyramid you know the rulers uh, uh from the shadows the wickedness and high places that they are the ones that are, you know, planning and plotting and have since the beginning, since he, you know, iniquity was found within him, since he desired the God him for himself, wanting to be like the Most High, to be uh, as Christ and to um, and to be able to rule over all the angels and and to be like God. That, that is the agenda. The New World Order is nothing new. The whole thing of asserting a one world government, one world religion, one world economy, all that is to be able to hand it over to um, the Antichrist and to rule for that short time that the Bible speaks about uh, that he would be given this rule for, you know, the three and a half years, seven years of tribulation, three and a half years of the a great tribulation. But all of that is indeed part of the end game. And as you said, it's all in our face now. Um, I remember seeing not long ago, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it was about, you know, something sort of the line that um, the AI technology, how um, the Skynet sort of type of deal that once it came on board and um, it was able to then having control of all of the governments and the technologies and defense systems that it decided to implement of itself an agenda to wipe out humanity and to take over and to control all you know and to to slaughter humanity in uh, every way that it desired and so those kind of things i think are also part of the beast system and i wanted to ask you also what you thought about because there's a lot of information that have been coming up lately about the Noahide laws, and can you speak about that? Well, you know, I think it's all about trying to get us back to the situation of control, even with those particular particular laws that they're putting in place. There's just a lot of things that I think are going on for the purpose of total control and making us worship evil and 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 i saw that in in really researching secret societies they start out by making you believe that you are worshiping god and in your mind you think jesus and then as you work yourself on up in those secret societies what you find out is it's a luciferian doctrines that you are actually participating in and so if they can make you let's say believe it's okay to worship on a certain day And, oh, it's okay that you can have Easter like this, but yet you're not telling you the whole story. You're not going back and learning the correct information about what really happened on Passover and the high Sabbaths and all that kind of stuff. It's it's just a little bit of – it's just tweaking stuff to keep you off uh, center or off the understanding of the trueness of God. And 
and I think you know before I I, I want to read something that uh, was that I wrote about in my book Eden the Knowledge of Good and Evil because I think it's really important to see when you and I are talking about secret societies then that we're not making this stuff up. We're we're talking right. about these things are really happening to secret societies. So I, I want to I just want to read a little bit from uh, Eden the Knowledge of Good and Evil and it was in the uh, particular chapter with nanotechnology that I wrote about. But it, what I wrote was this: the desire to control the world has been the ongoing goal of the elite within secret societies. One of their own, Dr. Jose Delgado, professor at Yale University, where the famous Skull and Bones Order is located, actually said these words. These are his words. We need a program of psychosurgery for political control of our society. The purpose is physical control of the mind. Everyone who deviates from the given norm can be surgically mutilated. The individual may think that the most important reality is his own existence, but this is only his personal point of view. Man does not have the right to develop his own mind. We must electronically control the brain. Someday, armies and generals will be controlled by electronic stimulation of the brain. Now, I'm mm-hmm. going to tell you, for a man to really say that and, and to know that they could literally make you a robot to their powers tells you that this has been going on a long time. And so I'm going to read a little bit longer in, into this. This is what I said. Dr. Delgado's scientific work began in the 1950s when his mind control tactics were funded, now listen to this, by Naval Intelligence and our United States Air Force. He proved through his vast research that individuals are defenseless against direct electrical manipulation of the brain because it deprives the person of the most intimate mechanisms of biological reactivity. By using electrical stimuli, the subject is unable to stop the biological response in his body. A person cannot override what the brain fires for the body to respond to. The individual is therefore rendered completely helpless. This discovery led to the 1960s investigation into the strategy of directing microwave beams at targeted human beings from a distance. These studies found that microwave, which is electromagnetic low-frequency radioactive beams, created enormous anxiety and hyperactivities in those who were targeted, so much so that it led to their complete physical exhaustion. Wow. And now yeah, we're seeing MIT mean. coming out about that. I mean, I'm telling you that it's... If that's not telling you something, we're talking about back to the 1950s that our government was already aware through his research, Zan, they could control us mm-hmm. like robots. Right. And, you know, uh, I really love when you read from your book, Dr. Joy, because your research is so intense and so uh, ahead of time. And, it you know, it shows us, it gives us an idea as to the veracity of those things that we're speaking about. And so... Yeah, please do whenever you can share, you know, quotes from the different books that you have out because uh, it just reaffirms these these things. And again, the the technology and and you know, going back to the fifties and they were practicing and implementing yes. and doing like the MK Ultra and all of that. The 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 different um, you know where they were giving uh, drugs to military soldiers and. Uh, all these different groups of people. I mean, the mind control techniques now that we're in, you know, almost 2020, Dr. Joy, I mean, how advanced that has to be in 70 (laughs) years. You know, I I mean, mean, you just imagine. And, 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 you know, these are things that uh, you, you can't just say, well, the government doesn't do things like this, you know. And I used to have people say, "Oh, the government would never. Our government would never do this." And of course, that's why I wrote in that same chapter, "Oh, well, let me tell you what the government has done to people right, right. unsuspecting, because you know they they developed vaccinations, they used them on people, right. they did not tell them 
Um, I, you know, I, I showed back in the 1990, I guess 1995, that health workers uh, found out that the tetanus vaccine was causing young women in the Philippines to abort and become sterile. You know, mm-hmm. and and what happened is they developed a tetanus shot that included a chemical called human clonic uh, gonotropin, which is a, they actually use HCG for that. They didn't warn those women that they were really being targeted for creating an immune system response to pregnancy. In other words, it would make them abort. And the problem is, once it made them abort, they became sterile. You know, and then wow. uh, I, I went on to talk about some of the other things uh, that that just were very appalling to me. What and it was kept secret. I mean, the use of Agent Orange during the Vietnam War. You know, and the numbers of children mm-hmm. that you know resulted from that. And I, of course, our government has to pay for that now that that's been all brought out. Uh, but right. you know, things like Gulf War syndrome and the numbers of vaccinations they gave some of those people, and then um, the fact that they used. Uh, you know, different things on um, the, the syphilis thing with the, uh, the, the black people, uh, and that was called yeah, the, the syphilis. Tuskegee syphilis experiment right. with neural diseases. And then there was also. Um, Those people died. Uh, that, that's right. And then there was yeah, a mentally retarded that they used uh, on, uh, you know, radioactive material in case you were near, you know, a, a, an atomic bomb. And so they gave mental retarded people, you know, pro, uh, different things to see how that would actually affect them. You know, the polio vaccination program that occurred in Africa prior to the first AIDS outbreak, you know, there's always been the question that they used something from the green monkey and they never identified whatever it was. I mean, there's just all this stuff. And I and I think one of the biggest things that's, that's really concerned me is that things, for example, people, you know, the diabetic community eats a lot of Splenda. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. it is a placement for sugar. And of course, right. it's 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 what people don't know is that the sweetener involves a chlorine type process that actually is a molecular change. It causes it to really to become kind of unstable. And it what just got me was that same chlorination process was used in the manufacture, uh, which uh, Hitler used to chemically kill. Jews in some of the death camps where these unstable mm-hmm. molecules were l- released. So when you, you look at that and you see that even if you watch the, the commercials on TV about new drugs that are coming out, you know, they have the people dancing and they're just feeling so wonderful. And while they're doing that, they're talking about and you can die from this and this and this and this and this and this and this. You know, they're telling all the terrible things that could happen to you and they have it lower where you can't hear it. But they make the people look like, oh, I'm taking this new drug and I'm feeling so wonderful. But then if you really listen to all the things it can cause, I mean, like it's one for depression. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking if you get those symptoms and those illnesses, you might think you had a depressive situation, but now you've got a real depressive situation. So there's just a lot of things that have been going on in our world. And, of course, we are told that back in biblical days that sorcery, was actually pharmaca. I mean, that's kind of the the um, Hebraic terminology for for um, sorcery is pharmaca. Is where it came from. It's the use of drugs. And my gracious, right. you know, most people are taking ten or fifteen drugs every day, and they all have these huge numbers of side effects. And if anybody knows, when you go into a, chemi- a chemical um, lab. And you start mixing different chemicals together. Well, if you've already got a chemical that you're taking a drug for this, and then you take another chemical for something else and another chemical, well, you know, if you didn't have anything else in your body, that might be okay. But then it's, you add them, then there's chemical reactions happening with those particular chemicals. And, and, and I think yeah. that's why you're seeing now so many lawsuits. On TV, you know, if you've taken the drug so and so, and you develop whatever, you know, call the law offices or whatever, it's because your body cannot assimilate this. It's no different than the genetically modified foods that we we try to process in our bodies. I mean, it just is not what God designed. The body was actually designed to heal itself. And you and I've talked about the fact that uh, the body resonates at a correct yeah. uh, resonation. And I always believe that King David, when he played his harp and he sued Saul and brought healing, that there is a musical resonance of the body because we are all singing. Our DNA is, is singing individually for each one of us. And if it's brought into the harmonic place it should be, 
then you're not sick. You don't feel bad. Right. But, but you know, if Satan wants to control the world, he's going to keep those kind of things so messed up and keep us so sick and so busy working and so busy taking medication. And if you can't deal with it, then you're going to start drinking and then, you know, the drugs get involved. And then it just becomes this escalation of a cycle that you're going round and round and round as fast as you can. And you don't even realize what's happening. And it's all been set up to cause you to lose your soul. And I think that's what just gets me is that now, as much as we have studied and we've researched this, the one thing they're after, then, the one thing they're after is our soul. Mm. Yes, Because they don't care about anything else. The right, only thing they're right. after is our soul. And I think we don't realize the importance and how precious that we were made in our creator's image and that he gave us a soul that, you know, at death we don't die. I mean, studying all this and, and, and you know, the, the near-death experiences of the people I've, I've taught with and had experiences about this, when you leave your body, you literally look like you. I mean, you, you, your mind's still thinking, your your body may be, you know, down there crushed in the side of a car, but you're floating up above it, you're looking at it, you see what people are saying, but you're still with you. You still look like you, you're still thinking like you. So that means that this thing that's our, and within us is us, totally, through and through, mm-hmm. and that something was on this, is on this planet and and, it's, and we were told, you know, if we listen to what Scripture says, that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're right. fighting against principalities and powers in high places that we cannot see, but yet can see us. They're the watchers, yeah. holy ones. Yeah. Those kind of things are spiritual beings that are within the same matrix that we live in, that we consider reality. Because we can't see with our eyes, but in certain levels of the spectrum of light. So that means... In our little area that we can see in a bell curve, the left and right is full of something. And like you and I mm-hmm. talked about, you can take a microscope. You can't see that anything's on your skin. You put your hand in a micro, you know, microscope, micro microscope, and you can see all these things crawling all over you. You can see the bacteria. I mean, you would be so freaking out that you wouldn't want to even eat with your hands because of this stuff all over you. But when you look at your hand, you can't see it. And, and, and yet, it's really there. It's just like if you didn't have to right. go to see further out in the heavens, you wouldn't really know that there was more things out there if you just had the naked eye to look at it. So this is where I think people fall short in understanding that there's something here has been with us. And from the time of the Garden of Eden, they wanted to take away our soul. And that's yes. what they're after. They're not after our money. They're not after anything that we have. They're after the very thing that allows us to live forever in right. paradise one day. And you know, if, right. if 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 you if we guard our houses, you know, we put we put surveillance systems in our houses, and we buy guns and ammunition, and you know, we try to have police to keep people out of our house. You know, we want to protect what what's precious in our home. And, you know, our body is a temple. Yeah. I mean, we, we've been told that. And so the precious, most precious thing within our house is our soul. But we don't, we don't put up our guard. We don't, we don't you know, and the, and the Bible tells us, you know, put on the whole armor of God, you know, he's, and he's telling us to focus on good. He's telling us how to be the policeman. He's telling us how to be, you know, the gun, the sword. He's telling us how to put this armor on the outside of our body in, in faith and in Scripture and, in the, in the, you know, the Word of God to defend our temple from losing our prized possession. We'll do that for our physical houses, but nobody really has taught us how important it is for us to be the police keepers of our body. And, and with reading what I just read from my, you know, from my book, uh, Eden, they're going after that. They're going after the very soul that's within you in such a way that if they can control you biologically, you won't have a choice. And when you lose freedom of the ability to make a choice, it's 
over with. You can't even fight it. You don't have anything biologically in your body that can overcome it. So you want to focus on God. You want to get choose right. You want to be the policeman of your system so that when Jesus calls us home in a catching away, you go then as the bride of Christ. You do not want to get left because the only ones that are going to be sealed in their forehead in that pineal gland area that can fight or even have an understanding about the Antichrist are the 144,000 from the 12 original tribes. And there's only 12,000 in each one of those. And so if you're not Hebrew and you're not pure Hebrew like that, then you're just left without anything. And, of course, we know that, you know, as the time goes on, the days are not cut short. Flesh won't even survive. So we're mm-hmm. almost to that point with art- artificial intelligence. We're almost to the point right. that right. the technology is to the point that we can't function as humans anymore. We'll be functioning through the use of artificial intelligence and whatever and not have free will and not be able to choose between good and evil. We'll just be forced into choosing whatever's transmitted to our brain which MIT is already showing they could do, you know, and, and put music, beats, whatever, right into your mind. And, right. you know, having worked with schizophrenics all these years, when you hear voices in your head, if you heard something talking to you and telling you something and whatever, do you think you want to tell anybody else? Because the first thing you do if you tell somebody else, they're going to say, call the paddy wagon. This cat is really right. messed up. They need to go off Lock and be put up, up somewhere. Exactly, yeah. Yes, and then the other thing is that Satan and the powers and principalities are doing is that they are at every turn of the way setting up and establishing uh, the portals by which people get caught up in allowing them to enter into their lives. Like, for instance, now uh, everything, you know, as far as like the Twilight movies and all these different um, Charmed and all these different series where they're opening the youth to playing with tarot cards and uh, getting involved in the new age and um, playing with the Ouija board. That's like a a Friday night thing to do with your friends now is to gather together to go to some haunted place and play with the Ouija board. And these kids have no idea as to what they are inviting into their lives. And then many of them are so led astray that they have no faith in God. They completely believe in, you know, the Darwinian evolution that we evolved in the monkeys. And and now they believe that the ancient aliens were the the missing link. And so they're buying into that whole thing as well. And so everything. And then with so many people being depressed and uh, not finding any hope in the whole American dream and seeing just, you know, if they waken in, in any manner to the to the New World Order and what we're contending with as, as world and they have no faith, well, then that's a heavy burden on a person and uh, not having any uh, faith or any hope in Christ and to know uh, our King and Lord and our Savior and Messiah, then that will definitely depress them you know, and then so all these people are depressed and they're on these medications, uh, a lot of bipolar, schizophrenic and all these different things. And so and then also the, the self-medication, you know, so many people um, self-medicating with these high powered um, marijuana. I mean, the marijuana that is available to people now is just overpowering. And so. It's it's zombifying uh, the the children of this generation, and it is opening them at every turn of the way uh, to all these spiritual demonic forces, these demonic attacks. And like you said, they can't speak out or say to anybody, oh, you know, I'm hearing there's these voices. You know, there's nowhere to turn to really for spiritual deliverance because so many of the churches are all about prosperity and they're not really even talking about you know the who the enemy is and what we are contending with uh, uh, with regard to the war against the the sons of Belial the the children of the devil and so I mean that has just um, created to where now people are 
on the edge of just losing it. And you see this happening left and right. I just somebody told me a story yesterday about some person that just was uh, in the mall of America and threw a five-year-old boy off of the fifth story. You know, he was there with his family and somebody just picked him up and threw him over the rail and the boy's in like critical condition. But this, this kind of stuff is happening all the time. And I saw another story just um, in a couple of days or weeks ago where a man got really agitated at this homeless man asking him for money. And so he decided to start running them over while they were sleeping. And he ended up killing like six people before they were able to catch him. But I mean, just the, the minds of people, the mindsets and uh, it's just, it it's a terrible, terrible time. And the, you know, they're so, uh, open to these mind control technologies and to suggestion, you know, like even what we were speaking with that, with the Momo, you know, and um, her yeah. coming on during these children's cartoons and, you know, suggesting to the kids to take their lives and how they are. I mean, it, it, it's, it's crazy, Dr. Joy. Well, I want people to really understand the research that I've done is that the human body does not have the biological capacity to fight, really fight back at itself. In other words, our bodies are slave to our minds. So whoever controls mm-hmm. the mind of you controls your body. Uh, I was mm-hmm. looking at, on down in some of the other things that I had written about all this in my Eden book. I, I specifically said in 1981 there was a book that was written by Brad and Francis uh, Steiger that was entitled Gods of Aquarius, and they proposed connecting all of mankind to a super brain, and they wrote this, this is what their words were. The only viable solution is to link the brains of all men into one giant super brain. It is the entire species which has been developing, and it is the entire species which now must be linked into one super being. I mean, so that was the intent uh, in, in 1981 to make us like all worker bees, like I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I went on to say that, you know, the unsuspecting public continues to believe that we have free will when we are not aware that the outside sources are actually starting to produce our own thoughts and behaviors. And this deceptive bliss of secret control of the masses is exactly what the Satanic Brotherhood was working so diligently to attain. And I went on to say that back in 1953, and this is, I mean, this are years ago that we're talking about, uh, Bertrand Russell, who was a member of the Illuminati, wrote in, mm-hmm. the book, in their, their book, The Impact of Science on Society, and uh, said, you know, about purporting the advantages of mind control. And this is what, that's what, this is what they wrote in their book. It is to be expected that advances in psychology will give government much more control over individual mentality than they now have. Education should aim at destroying free will so that after pupils have left school, they shall be incapable throughout the rest of their lives of thinking or acting otherwise than as their school master would have wished. So when you yeah. see this, you find that when we're not understanding how kids can be in school and come out and not really have learned anything, the school system has been set up to do a lot of brainwashing, a lot of changing things. And you're seeing kids, you know, turn more to uh, this technology that allows their brains to be more manipulated like the the binaural beats that I talk about when when you have a beat on one side and a beat on the other side and it causes a phantom beat in the center of your head there's all these weird 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 things that technology is promoting and causing people to you know get more and more involved with but the thing about it is in looking at uh, my research when you go back we're saying like the 1950s then that this stuff like you're talking about earlier if it went underground and it's been, you know, gotten better and better and better from those days, imagine what they really are capable of. I mean, I fully believe that when you turn on the TV with the fiber optic cables, they're probably watching you. 
I, I feel like, you know, with our cell phone towers, with the number of satellites, the secret satellites that's been sent up, it's all playing out to the end of days when you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade without the mark of the beast. And we are getting there so fast that we cannot just keep I – don't, I don't see how people just can't see it. I mean, it's just so obvious that we are almost to the day that we will not be able to do anything if, if, uh, if the sole control person gets at the top of the pyramid, that, you know, you're going to have to give into it. You won't have a choice. It will be, it's going to be manufactured in such a way that you can't fight against it. And they've been working on this a long time. Right, for a very long time. Um, also, just recently, they, there's a series that came out on Hannah, uh, and it's talking about, the the government taking children and then heightening their super senses and creating super soldiers out of them and that we know also that people have been and there's been um, stories about this that have psychic ability and psychic capacity that they have also been targeted by government and put into programs to develop and to heighten their uh, their abilities the remote viewing um, platform and all of that, which uh, has also come to the forefront in the past several decades. And so there's all that kind of technology and experimentation going on as well. Do you have any ideas on um, that kind of stuff, Dr. Joy? Because we know that, you know, the, one of the reasons they hunt for the the giant DNA and all of that is part of this super soldier type of thing and that Thomas Costello he reported long ago that you know in the Dulce underground bases that they were already involved in this kind of cloning and genetic experimentation and creating these half um, hybrid human and you know these hybrid type of beings well I think we can go back and we can look at Hitler I mean perfect example of Uh uh, someone who was an evil genius who had some of the best minds in science and biology that's ever existed on this planet as far as understanding even DNA and, uh, and genes and, and that kind of thing because it was the intent if Hitler had have won the war. We would, we would always speak in German, and we'd probably all be blonde right. hair and blue-eyed because his intent was form that Aryan race, that Superman race in which everybody was connected like bees, intelligent, you had your own army, you know, they marched like an army. They did whatever he said do. And um, and and the fact that there's never been proof that any of those scientists ever really paid the price for what they did, most of them were taken out by the Vatican Church, you know, that I've explained a lot in, in my research and in my books. Right. But they were secretly taken to South America. And there is a city in South America, Twin City, where there's no doubt that they believe that Joseph Mengele continued to do his scientific experiments using women and, and actually implanting them, and then they were delivering twins. It's, that's why it became known as Twin City because there's so many blonde-haired, blue-eyed twins. So right. that tells you, all, you know, to start off with that even looking back in the days of Hitler, they had, they had perfected that pretty good. And so if right. that was already perfected to the point that it was, you know, where we are just now hearing about, well, you know, we can look at using stem cells and we can do some gene therapy and we can do all these things that we, we hear on the in the mainstream media. Whatever they've done since days of Hitler got so more far advanced in, in the cloning techniques and, and keeping flesh alive and, and and all of that. I mean, there's just there's, – there's no way that they didn't continue to develop it. I, and what really upset me is that and looking back at Hitler, I mean, you know, Henry Ford and them were supporting him. He had he had the support of some wonderful people. <laughs> and you're kind of like, what were they getting out of it? What 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 was this whole agenda really about? And so you have to look at the biological aspects of it. They were trying to get rid of pure Hebrews, which they didn't want to exist because biblically, the pure Hebrews were the ones that's going to be, you know, the, the were the chosen. And so they wanted right. those people out of the way, so they were doing DNA experiments to determine who was a pure lineaged person, not a Kazarian Jew, which was mixed with Babylonian, you know, in, in, in Hebraic lineages. Because the term Jew 
was never used until there became a mixed thing. When the Hebrews came out with the Israelites, they were called Hebrews and Israelites. And then when God said, don't mix with the Babylonians, and then they started taking husbands and wives, then their child couldn't be called a Babylonian, and they couldn't be called a Hebrew or an Israelite because they weren't either. They were a mixed breed, and that mixed breed became Jews, the Kazarian Jews. So if, if you look back at what Hitler was doing, he was trying to identify the pure Hebrews, and that's why your Kazarian Jews, who he let go, are the ones like the Rothschilds who helped start really uh, the land of Israel. I mean, even the flag that flies over yeah. Israel was their 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 symbol. That is that is not a right. symbol of Jesus or anything like that that <laughs> flies over Israel at all. I mean, that's a it's like a <laughs> six pointed star as above, so right. below. It's two triangles, one going up, one going down, which is a secret society thing. But um, mm-hmm. you know. Those kinds of things are have been and always have been in our face, but because we didn't have the technology for and, and radio shows like this for us to get together and share research, most people didn't know anything about what we were talking about. Um, and now we're trying to say, well, look, back in the day, we were already seeing how all these things were b- being manipulated for the purpose of establishing a race that would be connected. Really, like I say, going back to that universal consciousness that was no doubt there uh, in the, when the Tower of Babel was being built. And they're trying to take us right back to that process, and that's why that's on the back of our dollar bill. They're trying to build that back to that same spot and same place. Yes, Very sad. absolutely. Yeah, it, it really real. is. And, right? Very real. And, you know, this again is they they show all these kind of things too in the the movies in Hollywood um they're forecasting ahead and what they are doing and um and you know again it's not anything that is hidden and then the kind of like we know about operation paperclip and how they um pardoned right. so many of these nazis and incorporated them into different secret programs even nasa Came up uh, with you know the the knowledge and the uh, as far as Werner von Braun, all of that, and so Joseph Mengele and the MK Ultra and all of that. I mean, uh, and so you know, 70 years in advance now, and they're speaking about uh, just creating and uh, manipulating people to do all the different things, and they they've been doing these things now. You know, even with the the Patriot Act and now being able to label anybody a domestic terrorist that they can torture and, and detain indefinitely whomever they want now. And so the, the government is completely out of control. Uh, and now with, you know, the arrest of Julian Assange and all that, as far as, you know, freedom of speech, all that uh, is, is pretty much dead as well. I mean, we have gone so far into the dark side of 1984 and uh, all oh, yes. of what Orwell wrote about in those times. I mean, for people to deny uh, all these things. Um, so kind of, Dr. Joy, um, what are you writing about researching now? Are you um, talking about or sharing as far as, you know, how far we are in the end of days? What are you, What are you looking for on the horizon? What are you uh, keeping your eye on, we know that you know with the that the whole third temple and all of that in Jerusalem, that all of that is being pushed. The two state solution and uh, all that that seems to be you know kind of the last few things before what seems to be the coming of the Antichrist. Well, if you stop and think about it, then there's really nothing else left in biblical prophecy before the catching away. I mean, we are. Literally, probably um, just, you know, the the catching away will probably be something that's going to be very soon. And then if you look at, you know, the Antichrist coming in, into uh, to power, the fact that the temple already has a altar built on it, they already have all the the needed utensils, the, the priests are trained, they have the red heifers, mm-hmm. the altar is there, right. they're just waiting for the government to give them to go ahead and start doing the sacrificial things every day. I mean, if you really look at it, 
there's not a whole lot to be done in any of those temples. Even the Dome of the Rock could be transferred and changed into uh, the, you know, the temple. There, there's, there's all kinds of things that I believe are happening on a daily basis. The fact that there, you know, there has been a peace plan written, that people are talking about it, uh, that Kushner is carrying it around, he's discussing it with people. Uh, and the fact that um, Netanyahu is just, you know, he's back in power. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. all these little things that that really add up. I mean, we, we've, we've had issues with uh, China and whatever. We know that the kings of the East are ha- unhappy about certain things. I mean, all this is just lining up, and that's where I just try to focus on looking at, at the news and, and, and doing any kind of research. How is that playing closer and closer to really the the the, the coming of the Antichrist stepping onto the to the world stage and then locking people down in their mind? And so I guess the pineal gland and how the technology is being more and more developed and being more brought out, out into the open about how we can manipulate the human mind. Um, and, and we can see it around us. I mean, when you stop and think about people who are willing to kill babies that are born, not like when they first get pre- a woman gets pregnant and you get an abortion. We're talking about uh-huh. full-term babies that people let die. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, uh-huh. and, and people people have the mindset that that is okay, okay, uh-huh. and, and they and supposedly go to church, and they're Democrats. Uh-huh. And, and I'm like, what? why can't you see – this problem. Why can't you see that if you take guns away, the society and history shows us, then Hitler takes over, or Pol Pot that took over Cambodia and then slaughtered the you know masses of people. You, you can only go back if you're smart and see that this is what happens when you do this. And you know right. you can take away all the guns in the world. The bad guys are still going to be the bad guys, and they're going to have something that you exactly. can blow up stuff with fertilizer. You can. You can blow up things with nails. I mean, you know, there's all other things besides a gun. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like the mindsets of people then, it's like, what are they thinking? I mean, I run across people yeah. and I'm trying to explain to them stuff, and it's almost like they can't really think. And then that, of course, right. really concerns me because then I'm not so sure their minds aren't already controlled right. in some right. weird form or fashion like I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and those I of mean, us who have been putting God about. first. Yeah, right. I think if you put God first and you keep God first, you keep your telecommunications open with God. But the moment you start yeah. doing these other kind of things, you're letting Satan lock on to you. And if he can lock on to that pineal gland, he's shutting down your transmission and receiving from God. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so many people nine. don't hear. Yes, yes. Yeah, these are... These are very strange times, Dr. Joy. Uh, and as, as you said, I mean, really, we we are so close to the end. It's like, look up because your redemption is nigh, you know. Um, uh, and then just uh, all the debt with America, I mean, at some point, that's going to come into play. We can't just continue to borrow money in the manner that it is and just have everything go and be, you know, all normal, something's got to give at some point. And, uh, I just, uh, it's just, things are just so crazy. So crazy. Well, I just don't, I, it can't continue the way it is. Right. And we've already been told exactly. that it's going to come to a time when all these things are going to happen and it's going to get closer and closer together. And then we're seeing that. It's just like today, we had tornadoes yeah. on the ground all down here in South Georgia. I grew up in a time down here. We we never saw a tornado. A tornado at night was right. unheard of. A tornado this in the winter time was unheard of. Even even a lightning in the winter time was unheard of. So everything is changing, and it's getting worse mm-hmm. and worse and worse. Just like the Bible told us it was going to do. Identical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we can't yeah, really deny. Not- I mean. We can't deny it. It's happening. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to ask you down there where you are, Dr. Joe, do you, do you see a lot of the chemtrails? Are they, because it seems that they are spraying every time there's a, a storm system that comes through here yes, near Atlanta. We, I, I, 
Yeah, I've noticed that uh, we're having a lot more of that. I first started taking pictures of those uh, probably maybe nine, eight or nine years ago when I first started noticing some of the planes were actually doing circles, and you could see chemtrails in circles in the sky. And it was not a plane that was typically flying at a high altitude, and it was, you know, coming out of the exhaust or whatever. It was literally spraying. Um, and it does concern me because you just look at the numbers of people that are having a lot of respiratory problems. And right, um, right. There's, a, there's a chemical that they can kill chickens with if they get, you know, a bird virus. They can spray it, and, and it kind of suffocates them. Their lungs shut down. So, if you know, if they really wanted to do something like that to us, all they have to spray is the air, and everything below that cloud would suffocate, and you wouldn't even understand right. it. You'd just get where you couldn't breathe, and that would be it, just like the chickens. Right. They don't know what hit them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm afraid that they have um, – they have power over the air. They have power over everything. And, um, you know, if you don't take the mark, when they tell you to take the mark, they're going to cut your head off. I mean, it's just down to right. it that all I can say is you don't want to get left behind. You do not want to get left behind. <laughs> There's going right. to be a catch in a way, like the Bible tells us there's going to be a catch in a way. <laughs> you do everything in your power every day to try to yeah. stay, you know, prayed up and ask for forgiveness yeah. because – People, there is nothing, there is nothing that God will not forgive you. I don't care what you've done. A sin is a sin is a sin. Well, you stole a pencil or you committed murder. You can be forgiven for that sin. Don't live the lie that you've done things so bad, God will never forgive you. He wants you to think that. Think that you have something so precious in your little house, inside your body, that is so precious, so precious, that God would send his son to die for that to yeah. give you eternal life. It is it's more precious than gold. It's more precious than silver. It's more precious than the Hope Diamond. It's more precious than anything. You can even phantom. So, you know, when we do these radio shows, I always feel like, you know, the people that are listening, please hear what Zen and I are saying. Please make God and Jesus a part of your life and look to them because the days are going to get so bad, you're going to suffer. I mean, I hate to say right. that. All, the, all of God's disciples, every one of them died martyr deaths, I mean, terrible deaths that sit yeah. down the revelator. But but you've got to stay true where, you know, the delay of gratification, we're, we live in a world where we want to be gratification very quickly. But your delay in gratification means that you're going to save your soul. Don't give in to Satan. Don't give in right. to the wiles of the devil. Protect yourself. And if, if for some reason, yes, we're all going to mess up. We are human. But immediately, when you realize you have done wrong, immediately get on your knees. Ask yeah. forgiveness and stay, stay close to God because I tell you, I believe that that thief in the night could come at any minute. There's yeah, nothing yeah. keeping the catching away from happening right now. And I don't think you want yeah, to be left behind. Sure. No, you don't. You absolutely don't. And we have to realize also that, you know, in the research, that the wrath of God is poured out on those that are not written into the book of life, uh, the wicked. And so a lot of what is written about in the end time prophecies about the, you know, the release of the locust army and uh, the wrath of God yes. poured out on it is for those that are will not be caught up and those that are That's left right. behind. It, it, so, it's those that yeah. left behind. And it's going to be some bad stuff. I mean, if we can already see how bad it is right now, imagine if right. you're left here right. with all bad people. I mean, literally, literally, right. where you can't defend yourself against anything and from any kind of torture and from any kind of plague. I mean, you, you don't want to be left behind. You just right. don't want to be left behind. Don't believe that if you left behind that you can form an army like those books used to tell, you know, and you're going to fight the Antichrist. I'm going to tell you <laughs> right. that biologically there's no technology that can fight against that Antichrist because he will be the queen bee, and he will have access right. to technology that controls your body. And you, oh, I already yeah. showed you from the research, you can't fight against it. No, the stuff right. that's coming during the end times, I mean, uh, during during the, particularly the Great Tribulation is going to be so far beyond anybody's most horrific nightmare. There is not, right. I mean, 
Nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. <laughs> it is going to be way. Imagine the worst horror movie you have ever seen in your wildest, the, the kind of movie that keeps you up like three nights going. Yeah. And you're like, I wish I hadn't watched that. It creeps me out. Well, okay, multiply that times 10,000 and you might touch the tip of the iceberg. It is going to be bad. Gosh, this has been an awesome discussion. Praise God. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're down to the last couple of seconds. I was wondering if uh, one one of the two of you wanted to go ahead and close with a prayer tonight. What a great show. Sure, uh, I can. Um, Father God, we just humble ourselves before you in thanksgiving for all life and being and for our chance to come together and fellowship in this manner and, and that you've blessed us to have the privilege to be a watchwoman and watchman and to sound the trumpet and to help people to come to discernment and understanding on those things that you have written about and shared through the apostles, the patriarchs and the prophets to warn us of those things that are coming, Lord, that, you know, one third of scripture is about the end of days and the fig tree generation. And now that we have arrived to those times, we're trying to sound the alarm so people can prepare themselves and their families and to, more than anything, to come into relationship with you, to have discernment on your word, and to also to seek you in prayer, to get on their knees, to ask for repentance, to ask for forgiveness, and to more than anything to know your son as Savior Messiah, that through him comes salvation and everlasting life and eternity forevermore, uh, an existence with, with you and a chance to, to be redeemed, to be returned to our former estate. And there's no greater privilege, no greater glory. And, Lord, I just pray that all those that are listening, that they prioritize the kingdom, that they make real their efforts and their opportunities in every day to really focus on that through you and to not give all of the other carnal aspects of life the meaningless, nonsensical, the distractions, the entertainments, all of that to give focus to that, but to really seek you in prayer and to really uh, try to um, bend the knee and to get before you and to ask for forgiveness so that they can be included in the eternity that you have so graciously extended to us and promised. In your name and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you both. Joy, thank you so much. Zen, thank you so much for joining us tonight again. Uh, you know, I don't know if you're thank up to you, it, but I'd love to set up another program. This is great. I love Absolutely. it. Praise God. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yes, yeah. I, I'm all game to do that. Cause we, oh, we've got so much research. Zen and I have done so much. <laughs> we'll be glad to keep coming back and talking about all this because right. it's really important yeah. for both of us. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. And we awesome. appreciate it. Opportunity done. Oh yeah, praise God. Thank you so much again. God bless you. And we'll definitely get that circled up and uh get it back into the calendar for hopefully very soon next month. Um and uh Thank just you. God bless you all for joining us. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at the um on the Wednesday night show, eight PM, Lord willing. God bless you. Right. Thank you. God bless. Us. God bless. Right.